This is a short introduction to the course separation processes. And uh, well, this year uh, we have the course web on uh, Lavit Lund. Next year, uh, 2020, we will have it on Canvas. So uh, this year, uh, if you don't have access, you haven't signed up, or there is some other problem, uh, when you go to Lavit Lund, please. Uh, make notifications so you see when we add things to course announcement, course documents and the discussion board. We will also use Peerwise. There is a course ID that you can see on uh, our course web and the identifier there is your Steel account. And uh, you're supposed to create answer and comment questions on Peerwise. We will see how many will add questions in English uh, in that system. Anyway, uh, in my handouts I use these symbols. So this uh, non-field cross uh, is a slide uh, where it's important that you make your own notes. Uh, I will say things not shown or write things on the board or, and so on or show things in a video. Uh, a red cross is a slide that you actually don't have. It might be a video, an animation, some extra or actually one of the things where I had filled have filled in something more. I only gave you each slide once in the handouts, so uh, a red arrow up means that that's a slide shown earlier, uh, possibly with some things added. There is a play button, and that means that there is a screencast video that starts here. If that play button is, is grayed out, that means that I have planned to make a screencast video, but I hadn't. I wasn't ready with it uh, when I printed uh, the handouts. So why do we study separation processes? Well, that's because um, we're using separation processes all the time. Every day you re uh, rely on uh, numerous different separation processes. Uh, like if you, if you think of a forest, uh, there are trees growing there and you will need separation to get cellulose and paper out of there. And of course you can go there yourself and pick out mushrooms and berries, of course. And, but we will talk about the more industrial processes. So why is uh, separation important? Well, think of a situation where you have substance A and substance B and there is some reaction going on in a factory and that creates some different products, C, D and E. And maybe D is the product where you actually earn money. That's your key product. While C and E will just give you problems, pollution. Uh, so C goes out to the air and E goes down to some water. Uh, so that causes problem and perhaps not all A and B react. And then you get problem with the purity in your, in your product. Um, and while well, you haven't used all your resources, so we often have some kind of separation to separate out the product, but maybe we need to add some more. Maybe we need to add something that separates out A and B so we can recirculate that and make more D. Or we could separate out C from the air effluent, uh, the gases effluent, and maybe we can even sell that. And perhaps we can do the same thing with E. Uh, so instead of having just one product, we now have three different products. So that might be one case. We will go through a number of themes in this course. The first theme is overview and choosing of separation processes. Uh, and then we will go into membrane and filtration, then evaporation, distillation, adsorption and chromatography, and finally drying. So this is essentially one week uh, for each, approximately. And there are some compulsory tasks and labs uh, associated. Uh, so what have previous students said? Well, uh, this is the course of uh, experience questionnaire results for the course uh, since 2004. It? It's, to me at least, this looks fairly good. Uh, most students think this court is important for the education. Uh, the satisfaction, overall the satisfaction goes up and down a bit, but uh, looks reasonable. Uh, and of course, when we see these uh, course 
experience questionnaire and when we have formative evaluation and when we see what you do in the course we think of it and I think how can we improve this so we every year we try to improve something so 2017 we updated the compendium and added uh, quite a few YouTube videos in 2018 uh, we I wrote a new chapter on membrane uh, uh, instead of the material we had before and I also started giving uh, those lectures because we had uh, the old professor retiring in 2019, uh, I have translated most of uh, the compendium. What's left to translate is actually the very first chapter. Uh, and yeah, and we need you. Uh, we need you to answer the course experience questionnaire at the end of the course uh, to take active part in the formative evaluation that we have during the course and act your active participation in the course so we can find out what works and what doesn't work that good. So formative evaluation, uh, that is actually compulsory at this faculty. So we have to, uh, to try to figure out what works during the course so we can make adjustments while the course is happening. And we typically do that in a number of different things, uh, in a number of different ways in this course. I could give you a minute paper, that is, I give you a small piece of paper and at the end of a lecture, for example, I ask you to write down the most important thing uh, or something that you didn't understand or something like that. And then you hand that in uh, or we evaluate that in some different way. I often ask you to raise fingers, mm, so meaning that everyone should raise their hand and then uh, use the number of fingers uh, to show to what extent they agree or disagree uh, with the question or uh, I uh, asked you. Uh, there will be lab quizzes. Uh, we will use Peerwise. There is a discussion board on the course web. And that is the the main way of communication, except for when we actually see uh, each other in real life. So I don't answer emails, uh, rather uh, typically just write things, your questions on the discussion board, uh, because then other students can see my answers. Uh, so everyone gets the same info. Uh, I often use buzz groups. Uh, during lectures, we will give you feedback to the compulsory tasks and we might add other things, other ways of formative evaluation. The assessment in this course, uh, well, we have labs and uh, we have eight lab groups. And so we have four exercise groups that are divided into eight lab groups, 1A, 1B, etc. And the first lab is the membrane filtration lab, which takes four hours. And the distillation lab takes two hours. And more on that later. Uh, there are compulsory tasks that you also have to go through. Uh, and then you divide, uh, we divide the lab groups into pairs. So 1A1 is a group of two students, 1A2 is a group of two students, etc. Uh, for compulsory task one, it's both oral and written assessment. For compulsory task two to three, it's written. And to compulsory task four, you show the teacher your results and discuss with the teacher. And then we uh, let you pass if you have done things nicely. So CT one, two and three, you need to hand in through the course web and you find more information there. Uh, when, while using Peerwise, you can actually earn some bonus points to the first exam, the exam directly after the course. There's more information on the course web on how to get to Peerwise. Uh, you get one bonus point for creating one question, one bonus point for answering 20 questions, and one bonus point for commenting 10 questions. Uh, and we only give bonus points for activity before the deadline specified at the course web uh, and only at the first exam after the course. Um, and 
it's good if you uh, try to be active uh, because we have seen that the students who are active in peerwise they typically do better at the exam uh, even without counting the bonus points uh, and then we have a written exam uh, which gives you up to 60 points uh, the only things allowed there is the, uh, is calculator, a ruler, and the handbook uh, that we have uh, created, uh, that I am editor of. And uh, the grades, well, if you have 30 to 40 points, you get grade 3. If you have 41 uh, to 50, you get grade 4. And 51 to 63, you get grade 5. Uh, we have course material, uh, some that are for sale at Mediatrix, so the handbook, uh, which is allowed at exam without notes. Uh, you are allowed to put in stickers uh, to make it easier to find places, but you're not allowed to write anything on those stickers except words that already exist on that page. And there's the compendium. Uh, and you also find the exercises in that compendium. And then uh, we also uh, have for sale at Mediatrix a spiral booklet with diagrams. Uh, and you need uh, printouts of the diagrams uh, for the exercises. If you want to, you can print that as, uh, because we, as yourself because we have it as a PDF file as well. But that will probably cost you more than uh, by buying it from Mediatrix. Uh, similarly, I have a support for note-taking. It's not compulsory or anything, but I think it will help you a lot. Uh, it's also available as PDF, but for most of you I think it's better to have it as a printout. And if you want to print it out, then actually it's probably cheaper for you to buy it from Mediatrix. And um, as you probably know, I have always put out a survey before the course starts to ask who wants to buy what so that we can provide good prices for you. Then we will also uh, distribute various printouts during the course such as the lab instructions and the instructions for the four compulsory tasks. Uh, there is also suggested solutions to all exercises and that is available as a PDF file on our course web. But please use the suggested solutions carefully. Uh, try to solve the exercise yourself first. Don't immediately go to the suggested solutions because then you won't learn and then you are very likely to miss the exam. And please note that there might be alternative solutions that are perfectly valid. Uh, so the solution we give you is one suggested solution. And Quite often, uh, since we will use graphic uh, solution to some problems, the answer uh, you get might be correct even if you don't get the same numerical answer as uh, in the suggested solution. And it, the opposite might be true as well. Even if you get the same numerical value as the suggested solution does, it's not ne necessarily correct. Uh, so that's life for you. So the compulsory labs, we have two. Uh, the first lab uh, starts with the 15 minute quiz, quiz on the hour. So if it says that the lab starts eight, it starts eight sharp. And the first 15 minutes are dedicated to a quiz. And uh, then uh, you are divided into smaller groups uh, in the membrane filtration lab. And you do one of three ta tasks uh, in the lab description. And then at the end of the lab session, you report the results uh, to the other students. So everyone gets to know about all the three tasks. If you pass the quiz and are active uh, during the lab, uh, you pass directly. So you do a good presentation and you do a reasonable work during the lab. If you fail the quiz, you uh, are required to hand in a lab report uh, maximum a week uh, after uh, after the uh, lab. Um, there is also a distillation lab. Uh, only two hours. Uh, there is no report. It starts on the hour, and 
it's not much time, so please uh, read the instructions carefully. Uh, or we do the same tasks. And if you're not prepared, you don't want don't you're not going to manage to do the tasks within the two hours. Uh, and you just show your results to the lab assistant uh, and get a pass immediately if you have done things nicely. And the first theme is choosing separation uh, processes and there is a separate video on that. Please remember to read the 